jazz DJ? <laughs> well, he is quite the cool cat indeed, if judging from his interviews. And we're in Picks and Bands, Yasuo band out, <laughs> out of the game. <laughs> How, what year is it that Yasuo is a band? Uh, it could be one year ago, as yeah. a matter of fact. Well, it has and to be Yasuo one year ago. Yasuo and Zed. So the pocket bands have been pretty extreme this time around. No rise for Duke. Now that Najin's back on that blue side. Of course, in the first game, Najin was on blue. They banned Zed, Thresh, and Hecarim. This time, the Thresh is probably going to be their final ban here, unless they think his Ari, uh, Mickey's Ari, is that much of a threat, which many teams consider it to be ban worthy. Yep. We'll see what Nodge and EM Fire is cooking up underneath their noggins. Three seconds, and so the Ari. Somewhere in their necks. Somewhere in their necks. <laughs> All right, so Ari. I think that's a smart band face. Yeah, much better than Nodge and just And there's the Evelyn, but that's probably going to be a first pick Gragas for Nodge. They really like to take that champion when it's available. Alistair is also still up, which is oh, a very the strong pick. That's, that was their first pick in game one. They're going to prioritize it over the Gragas, just like they did in the first game of the series. All right, and it was banned by Anarchy last match, so they want to put Goong on a lot more uh, champion that he feel, would feel a lot more comfortable on. So Corky Gragas were taken in the first round of the draft by Anarchy in game one. I think he probably uh, takes Sivir here instead. Well, Gragas on there is a very strong champion uh, champion player matchup. And Rebels Anarchy debating their last pick for this round. I think Sivir is a much better choice, but they're hovering over that Corky. They may just want to give Song Yun that same champion. Maybe they can get that lane swap this time around. And they did, of course, fall very heavily behind based on that very good level one, actually, from Najin. Yeah. I don't see Rebels Anarchy making the same mistake again, so we'll see if how, if and how this uh, matchup will go, and Elise. I, you know, if I'm dodging here, you take Alistair, you could take the, you could take the, uh, the Kennen again with Lucian, mm -hmm. maybe make a play, but they're going to go for a much more standard comp, Maokai and Alistair, so heavy, heavy front line, already developed, great engage from Najin. Good peel also. Oh, they won't be lacking for damage as they have Victor with a lot of that AoE burst and the AoE sustained damage, in fact. And what is Mickey going to play into this? Uh, when Mickey's been in this situation without these kind of backline assassins, he typically goes for something like Ferris. Mm -hmm. um, could go for the Azir. Azir would be a very good pick here. Not a very Mickey-like pick, though. Uh, the mid lane Aurelia, something he's tried to pull out. Faker well, has been much more successful with that champion. Yes, but that is Faker as well. So, But the Rek'Sai will be the lock here. So a top lane Rek'Sai or a top lane Gragas. We have seen Ixu play top lane Gragas this season, so it could be a very possible pick. Yeah, they've got, they're cooking up something here. And they're taking away a couple junglers from Watch. They're punishing Najin for not taking a jungler in the second round of the draft. Fairly smart draft, in my opinion. Now, Elise has had some buffs recently. She has seen play in the LCS. Yep. But I think the Echo is definitely the stronger jungle pick at the moment, if you can get your hands on that. Could go for the Nunu in the total denial, uh, alongside the Sivir. Lee Sin, possibly. Watch does play Lee Sin. Yeah. As do every single other Korean jungler. Kind of a necessity for yeah. playing the jungle here in Korea. And it will be a Lee Sin lock, so Watch goes back to his old staple. And the Sivir. So another lane that Oak you should be able to do well in. So what is Mickey going to do at the end of the day here? Uh, various Aurelia picks that he's used before when he's been faced in situations like the one we're seeing unfold right now. They have magic damage out of Corky, so Aurelia is an option. I don't like the Varus, though, when um, Mickey plays it. Oh, Runeglaive Ezreal is open. It is, but that's not a good pick when there's a Maokai and an Alistair, so uh, he's going to have to go big on it. The last time he played this against SKT, 
It was shut down by the rise and the Maokai of SK Telecom. There's still a lot of engage from Najin. Siverolt and Alistair and Maokai should be able to catch up to this Runeglaive Ezreal. There's not, honestly, not a lot of peel. Yep. And Anarchy. Ixu looks like he's going to be going for the top lane of Gragas, so no Rek'Sai yep. split pushing in this particular game. They're going to be very reliant on Ixu's ultimates to keep Mickey safe, but Duke has... Duke can easily get a flank with a home guard onto the back line, and Watch will be able to kick the Ezreal out with some ease also. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see how well Rebels Anarchy will be able to protect Sangyun and Nikki in this game. And I like the Gragas top lane pick, though, personally. I think it, at least in the draft, as you were saying, they denied Watch these meta picks, but Watch defaulting onto that Lee Sin, though. I mean, that's the reason why you do it, right? You're trying to deny watch here. That's mm -hmm. that's the only reason why you would pick both the Rek'Sai and the Gragas, because otherwise having Gragas in the jungle and Nautilus in top is actually stronger for this particular poke composition, uh -huh. because you get more peel with Nautilus, and you don't necessarily need to engage with this poke comp. So, yeah. But I like the draft adaptation from Anarchy to try and shut watch down. We're going to have to see if it works as we get into Najin versus Anarchy game three tonight. Let's get into it. Fans very excited for this final game of the best of three. Well, here we are. I'm a little disappointed. Nod, uh, Watch isn't using the uh, the knockout punch Lee Sin skin with the ding ding sounds. I I don't like that one. I love that skin. Muay Thai Lee Sin forever. Okay. Well, and he is using the chroma for Dragon Fist Lee Sin instead. Uh, I guess I I don't actually even know what all the chromas in the game are. We've actually seen not very many chromas. Yeah. Here. Surprisingly. Fizz base skin has chromas as well. I guess Zach and does too, Lucian and base. Lucian. We haven't seen any Lucian chromas, actually. Yeah, that's Even though we do see the occasional Lucian pop up from time to time, especially Najin likes to play it. Mm -hmm. Well, Anarchy learned their lesson from game one and aren't doing anything crazy at level one again in case Najin EMFire calls them on their invade. So Najin trying to actually call the lane swap. They definitely want standard lanes, I feel, in this situation, especially with how OQ has been doing in the laning phase against Song Yun and Snowflower. And that's also the way that you punish Snowflower's roaming, especially on Tr Thresh, the champion that has been banned out by Najin in two games. Duke going to take the quick level two, get about, get about half a level off of those three stacked saplings right at the Raptor buff and then head over to the red side. So there will not be any punishment for weak side jungling from Najin this time around. Alistair goes to get a ward on the red buff. Possible chance for a three buff start here from Najin, depending on how they decide to play it. Gonna bounce right back over to the big Raptor. Duke will get some help taking that out and should get level two off of this. Snowfly, we're gonna walk in. Not gonna find anything though. Mm -hmm. And actually, Duke's not going to hit level 2 right away, so he going to continue the jungle follow for just a little bit longer. And I don't think the bottom actually side got a freeze there. I wasn't watching where Song Yun was, but I think he was starting in the jungle, so... Well, he must have suspected that it would just be regular standard lanes and didn't expect Najin to call a possible lane swap. Okay, so Ixu heading into the top side. My question is, did he get the blue buff? because that would be a good way to break the freeze with the Gragas quickly into this game. Wow, Duke gonna get a lot of XP. And, and he, did. Farm, he did get the blue buff, so good play there for Manarchy. And Duke just gonna collect that first minion wave very nicely. So no chance of a freeze, even though Pure coming into lane just in case they need a little bit more support. So uh, Snowflower is going to find Watch Trying to make a move up into top lane, but not really going to be too helpful yet. Song Yun has to stay back. The amount of crowd control in this lane is pretty ridiculous, especially now that Pure is level two. Well, 
this freeze is, looks like will be mostly broken very, very soon by Ixu and Snowflower. Meanwhile, mid lane, Goong is actually pushed up into his turret. Should have no problem CSing. Yeah, his wave clear coming through, though, is going to keep this Ezreal stuck close to his mid lane tower. Snowflower Nixu moving as a one man one man unit into that scuttle crab takes it. And just some more deep wards coming into the bottom side. So maybe a possible timing here for Najin to go after an early dragon, even though both crabs going over and Sangyun has to be so careful about this. That is incredibly dangerous. Nice, gets the summoner heal out. As Lyra just joins in to help clear out some of these minions from the turret. Attacks some creeps as he does so. <laughs> well, one just wants to make sure that, I guess, Najin and Fire doesn't dive Sangyun in his currently vulnerable state, even though he, he probably has his Valkyrie and the Flash here. Yeah, he certainly does, but he's also very low, and another set of CC could certainly end his life more prematurely than he would like. And there is Snowflower just going to recall now that the 1v1 has been set up a little bit better in the top side. So the kill pressure definitely not going to be on Ixu here against the Sivir. And OQ just hanging back very far in lane right now. Mm -hmm. They have no idea where that Thresh is at the moment. And Mickey is shoved in under his turret and he's going to get as much CS as possible, but CS still fairly even. One CS up is Goon. Yeah, and this... Well, Anarchy actually coming back down to the bottom side. And we don't see a swap into top yet from Duke. Mm -hmm. uh, just recalling and heading right back to where he started. And Anarchy changing their, the side of the map that they are going to be focusing on, at least for the moment, with three people down in bottom. And you see the pink wards starting to pop up in the mid lane for Najin. They want to make sure that this victor can push. And so they're just going to zone Lyra and Snowflower off. Now, they really do need to get Sivir down onto the bottom side as soon as possible so that they have an advantage before Corky hits six and really starts to uh, be able to compete with Sivir in terms of minion wave pushing. So possibly they could be waiting for OQ to hit six himself and maybe get a BF sword on his way back. But looks like Sanya should be hitting six level quite soon, actually. Yeah, watch now. Gets seen on a ward by his Gromp. So that's going to prompt a very easy pink ward clear from Lyra in the mid lane. And that's going to help Mickey continue to move forward and not feel quite so quite so bad about pushing up and the possibility of a gank coming in from the side. CS yes, still fairly even in the mid lane. And Mickey playing very, very safe in his lane. Yeah, so... Ooh. Uh, Kung has to play to the side right there. There's the clear coming out from the True Shot Barrage, but Goong uh, has every opportunity just to continue to shove, 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 get that chip damage on the turret, and then force the Corky and the Ezreal to overextend the siege, in which case it opens up that opportunity for Duke to come in and get onto the back line. Yeah, especially when uh, Goong gets some CDR along with the first upgrade on his Hex Core, he should be able to constantly sho shove that wave. But Nikki looks like he's well on track for his room wave. Yeah, and uh, you know, if he's not punished, we've seen what happens to these late game room glaive Ezreals around the world. If, if they get to the late game with not too much of a deficit, they will absolutely 100% take over. Yep, room glaive currently the favorite champion to ball out of control with in the late game, that along is, with the rise. Yeah, there's so much balling out of control these days. Too bad Dunk Master Darius isn't in the me in the meta. He's also, I think that skip might be disabled right now. I think. I think it's bugged actually. Yeah, it's bugged moment. with something to do with his uh, E interaction. I think. So we don't even have a chance of seeing Darius ball out of control. Oh man. When will they rework that champion? He was such a fun champion. He was never fun. 
For if you're anybody playing, yeah. but the person playing. <laughs> yeah. What's the point? Steal all the kills, yet yeah. do no damage in the late game. Who cares? It's a lot of fun. You are such a big lane bully when you play that champion, especially before they nerf that ultimate. Uh oh, he's oh. gonna come in. Is he gonna be he's gonna get it. He's gone. Oh, not quite. About 150 HP off. Goong manages to secure it in the end. And then walks very casually back to lane. Mickey has his <laughs> sheen. There oh, go. there's the room glaive, just waiting for a, a tiny amount more money. So good first recall. Now has some more wave clear with the AoE from the rune glaive and the smite from the trailblazer. And Lyra shoring up and catching the creeps, crashing into the mid lane turret. And Mickey is back in lane now. So, well. We're going to just see the endless wave clearing in that mid lane. Well, in all lanes, really, and Najin, their goal has to be to just keep on pushing. They want to win the pressure battle. Mm -hmm. Now, this means Watch needs to get some more deep wards in. They have to find timing so that they can safely get wards and keep track of Lyra so that Goong isn't punished for not having any movement abilities in the mid lane. Indeed, and here goes that ultimate from Ezreal. He's going to just keep throwing out his mystic shots, and there's a bit of an aggression onto Lyra. Oh, get wow, it. Oh. Watch actually gets pulled up onto the high ground, has to use the kick to disengage. Triggered the second part of his Q after the lantern was taken. Still wins out in terms of that damage. Mm -hmm. However, that is an ultimate down for Watch, so... Lyra looking to recall and possibly just ultimate his way back into that dragon area, which is what he'll do. And man, Mickey's starting to match Goon's wave clear now. Yeah, it's getting up there. And there's also no real kill pressure on Mickey with mm -hmm. the very limited available oh. crowd control Good chunk that is available to the Lee Sin Victor matchup. Mm -hmm. Mickey has, of course, those two flashes with the arcane shift. And yeah, he's he's starting to just maintain farming presence in the lane at the very least. Well, Ixu still laning very well against this Maokai. No, not very much pressure in the top lane, but that may change right now as Lyra wow, makes his explosive lane. cast used. There's a flash body slam. Duke is definitely going to go down here. How long can he last is the question. Trying to run through some bushes, but he's only really buying time. And there you go, W, but that's not going to be enough. Notch in response this time with a dragon Ooh. on the other side of the map. And uh. not going to work. That was seen by some wards as it tore through the air towards the dragon. And there is Duke. Doing his normal gum chewing in the booth. He's <laughs> like, all right, you killed me, but we got the dragon. Okay with this? Well, he's not out of gum yet, so Anarchy has a chance. He never seems to run out of gum, though. No, there was a couple times when he That's wasn't true. chewing gum. And then he went nuts. <laughs> you think the coaches would learn how to take it away from him by now? <laughs> it's like, we must activate Duke. Remove uh, the gum. Maybe he's like the Incredible Hulk. They just don't like him when he's angry. <laughs> You have to be careful about when you remove the gun. Yeah. Right? You only save it for truly desperate situations. <laughs> well, this could qualify as a very desperate situation, because if if Najin loses here, their road to playoffs is going to be very, very difficult. One might say nearly impossible. Yes. <laughs> it would take some serious performance out of Najin and some more upsets. Oop. Oh, can't get the Q. Well, that is going to be a blue buff steal. Can't get the Q, but can get the blue. A little bit too early. Eh. Oh, well, he didn't have a ward on, so he wasn't exactly sure where it is. The ward goes down. No, there's a pink ward oh, on it. Oh, there is a pink ward on it. Yep. Got my colors confused. <laughs> Thought that uh, perhaps they were going to be able to pull that one out and then therefore uh, hit the blue buff after that, but didn't work that way. They just left the blue right where it was. So a blue steal, and Goon gets another blue. That's that's absolutely huge in this situation because he's yeah. going to be able just to continue. Now they're going to try a dive here. Watch coming in from behind. Death Ray goes down. They got to teleport out immediately. Oh but there is Watch. He's going to get the kickoff. Can he get anything else? Goon is actually scrapping with Mickey oh. on the other side. Watch very low. They're going to have to body block. No, very the close. Q misses. 
And so watch, attempts to dive, there's Big the all-in. Lyra coming through, and Duke not very high HP right now. Goom still gets the kill. True and Sharp Barrage will be up soon. Double kill. Oh! oh the snipe on to watch, so two for one. Najin gets caught out on their own dive. Goong still in a bit of trouble right now, trying to trade. Mickey not going to hit another Q, and Goong gets some more damage in with a death ray. And Very exciting team fight. Only the junglers go down in the end. So that was exciting. No, it was a double kill. For, oh, it was a double kill? Yeah, it was a double kill for, for Victor, for oh. Goong. I apologize. And Lyra going back to the Raptor pit. And possibly a red buff handoff fairly soon, looks like. So, yep. Goong's still going to be pushing forward. Mickey, not a lot of HP to deal with this. He has Ooh. to be very careful. They want to go after Goong. There's the gravity field. Got to get the stun onto Lyra. Goong has to flash. Well, good try from Rebels Anarchy. You know, I want to get your opinion on this. So you have a Runeglaive Ezreal in the mid lane. Do you want to hand off both the blue and the red buff to the Ezreal? Uh, mm, that is a good question, because you are going to be able to tag it pretty easily. I don't know. We ha I haven't seen that yet. I feel like the extra true damage plus a little bit of slow that you get from the Q yeah. would actually, if it converts to magic damage, is it still treated as an on-hand effect? I actually I'm not don't sure. know that. I actually don't know. Lo lots of weird interactions with the Glaive on this patch. Which, yes, on this patch, which will be mercifully removed soon, <laughs> because that that uh, Luden's proc uh, and the Sheen proc at the same time is absolutely absurd. Yes, it is. At the moment. But Mickey's starting to fall behind in CS. A couple kills mm -hmm. over to Goom right now. And the blue buff denial has been solid so far from Najidi Empire. See, Anarchy not letting up in terms of wards. That is something that has been their strength this entire season, is just littering the map with vision. Yep, and Dragon will be up in a minute 50, so we'll see if they can gain. Oh, jeez. And goodbye, Mickey. Gets caught out. Pure with the play. Flash, headbutt, pulverize to catch Mickey out. And the Victor burst comes through. Ezreal's a very squishy champion, and Victor with his high damage. You miss position, and you will get punished. Yep. Mickey thought he was safe because he had that. Oh. Uh oh. OQ actually dodges the phosphorus bomb but pops his Spell Shield and his ultimate just to escape. Spell Shield not actually taken out in that little exchange. Well, Song Yun sitting around, possibly just waiting to push up this bottom wave, and Ixu will just get a ward onto the enemy blue buff. Yeah, no TPs available for this next dragon. Maybe Ixu can get his in there. It'll be an awfully close teleport timing for that cooldown. And he's doing some work against this Maokai. Of course, both of those top laners having that percent HP damage, so they can scrap it out with each other pretty well. And they both have sustain in some form, so they can also... Passive sustain. <laughs> the best type of sustain. Makes for very dynamic top lane <laughs> duels. Exactly, the ones where you don't even have to do anything to heal. Yep. Well... Bit of a wall, but Dragon will be up in 20 seconds, roughly. And there should be a team fight around it. So I think it, maybe Anarchy should give this one up. Does come with a little bit of risk. Actually, Ixu has his TP up, and Duke's still waiting for another minute. So Naj is going to want to delay this for as long as they can, just to make sure that they're not going to be ambushed here right at the Dragon. Ixu playing this lane pretty aggressively. He is a, a level up at the moment. Duke about to hit that level 11. There he goes. Yep. And yeah, in the in a straight up team fight, I feel like Naj and EM Fire does have the advantage. So I feel Anarchy may need to make a pick before they have before they really commit to this next dragon, if they if they choose to. Well, they have the Rune Glaive already, and they have the Trinity Force on the Corky, so they can win a fight if they land enough poke first. That is a that is a certainty. But that is going to mean that Najin has to waste a lot of time around this dragon, just getting hit. As we see them still clearing out the wards in the river. Anarchy's vision is not the best in the river itself. They're going to try and hand over this blue buff. This is very crucial for Mickey to acquire, and he's going to grab it with the E from Ezreal, just hopping over the wall. 
Now okay. Duke, they've waited long enough. He has his teleport, so Najin has delayed this so they can make a more convincing play. But there's still that tremor sense just keeping track of every single move, Najin. Just trying to chunk out Goong here. I feel like it would have been better served to save that. Well, he has a blue buff, and he has the Boots of Lucidity right now, so that cooldown is really not going to be that long. And Ezreal does hyperscale with cooldown because his Mystic yep. Shot reduces the cooldown of his abilities by one second every time he lands it. It's a pretty good deal for Ezreal. You can see it's already almost back up. It's another reason why this AP Ezreal is a real terror, because a lot of <laughs> AP items have that cooldown reduction on them. So it does make his skill shots even more pronounced. You know, this patch makes me really sad, because I'm a huge Ezreal player, and I'm just never able to play him, because I play him AD carry, but he's banned because <laughs> of the stupid mid lane interaction. <laughs> I'm sorry, Barry. Currently sitting on a 70% win rate with Ezreal. I, I actually like the concept of having mid, -rain, mid lane Ezreal with Smite be viable, but mm -hmm. it's just that Runeglaive is itself with its interaction with Ludens is the problem. Right. If, if that doesn't exist and they tone down the item a bit, then hopefully mid, mid Ezreal will still be viable, but it won't be as completely game-breaking as it is at the moment. Well, currently on the PBE, they're looking into possibly buffing the uh, the proc damage on the Ludens Echo, but, however, making the AoE only trigger on monsters, though. On the Runeglaive, you mean? Yes, on the Runeglaive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that might be quite a reasonable solution. So Najin going to get a tower. Dragon still alive through all of this as Najin takes two turrets. So great patience there from Najin, waiting for the teleport getting the mid and the bot lane tower where they have even more control before they want to commit to this. And at this point, Anarchy with their poke line has to overextend so far that they are very vulnerable to Maokai TP. Yes, they are. However, Mickey is very, very close to that Luden's Echo. Probably only a couple hundred gold off. He picks up this mid lane wave. I feel like he will recall and take it and make that buy. If he recalls, the, the dragon's gone. So that's the conundrum that he's currently faced with. Doesn't really have too many options, and the wave clear coming in from Victor and Sivir is making it very hard for Anarchy to defend this, but they're still doing a good job. They've got the crab now, have the speed trying, got a bunch of pink wards in to totally deny vision, except for on the dragon itself, one ward was just snuck into the back of the pit. Well, Goon takes a massive chunk of damage from the True Shot Barrage and the Arcane Shift. And meanwhile, Noodle Fight in the top lane. Oh boy. Ooh, Snowflower. Looked like he may have been caught up, but manages to get away. And yeah, the Dragon Dance continues. Well, it's going to keep going until somebody gets their way. Najin doesn't want to start it because the threat of the poke while they're on that objective is so high. Mm -hmm. They want to try and catch somebody out. I think Mickey just needs to find a sneaky opportunity to just recall and get his Luden's Echo because he surely must have it now. There's another True Shot Barrage to clear out the minion wave. This may be his timing, but I don't know about this. I think he's just going to get... The Dragon's going to go down immediately now that Najin has the angle and they know the Ezreal's back. And there's no True Shot Barrage to even help from the base, so... Yeah. Anarchy not, just giving up the objective. It's not the end of the world for them to give up the second no, time, right. though. Definitely is not that, that Ezreal is not going to get weaker, but the problem is very low amounts of damage on Anarchy's, attack damage on Anarchy's lineup, so as soon as uh, we start to see some of these, well, an Aegis come in, but right now Watch just went for the Giant's Belt, so that's not going to be happening anytime soon, but the oh. magic resists very efficient. Possible blue buff steal for Rebels Anarchy here. Watch is hanging around, however, they have full knowledge of where he is. Goon trying to make his way back up, but that's going to be too late. Smite and Lantern takes the blue buff away from Goon. Well, the tables have turned. However, OQ is split pushing in the bottom lane. And will be cleared out. And yet, yeah, spell shielded. Nice reaction time from OQ. Got to get the turret. Well so, tier two, and then just a quick runaway from OQ thanks to his on the hunt. Well, Nodge and EM are starting to accrue a, a bit of a lead in terms of Dragon and in Gold. So, their late game chances may not be the worst. Oh, Oops. meanwhile, Sangyun 
Yeah, gets, it caught, gets caught, caught out, and you have to be careful. Duke not going to take much poke damage, and the Righteous Glory adding a bit of punch to that engage. So Song Yoon finds himself about 50% HP. He'll heal up with that Cutlass in the end, so not too terribly much to worry about. And this is the time where Anarchy has to start turning these tables. Mm -hmm. Ludens Echo complete. And yeah. Well, they're just going to take a start. And the and bottom maybe one. maybe the bottom one, too. So many people sent up into the top side. Okay, not going to quite get the mid lane turret, but Goong's still going to take a bit of a beating from the Ludens, and Duke actually manages to make his way into the bottom side on time, so Anarchy saw a window right there where they could get a little bit of split push damage down due to the changing lane assignments as Duke went bottom, and OQ and Pure tried to hit the top side because they want to take down and finish off the outer ring. Yeah, Nodge and Yamfar starting to invest heavily into the top side of the jungle. This is smart. Yep. Anarchy, Rebels Anarchy bottom lane decides to just bug out. Well, but that's exactly what they need to do right now because now the outer ring is down. No turrets yet taken for Anarchy. So at any point, as long as Najin has deep wards, they can get the TP flank and force the kind of fight they want. This is a great position for Najin to be in as long as they can hold on to this outer turret. Yeah, and Goong is powering up quite a bit and will be doing a lot of damage to this Anarchy team in a 5v5 team fight, so Anarchy really needs to set up a siege sometime soon. Well, they have to set one up extremely cautiously because their jungle right now is just full of wards. Mm -hmm. and that gives Duke a lot of options, and Duke should uh, kind of be thinking about a teleport right here. He's walking into the mid lane instead. Cannon minion, they're going to be able to get it. No, not quite. Still about 65 HP. On the mid lane turret, that is one auto attack away from being finished off. Anarchy looking to clear some vision and establish some of their own. However, the siege is still going nowhere for Anarchy. Yeah, and because of the magic resist onto Duke and the Abyssal Scepter also with Goong, uh, th this Ezreal's not going to be doing as much as he could. He now needs to start thinking about getting that Void Staff. If anyone had an Aegis, that would be in insanely helpful. I feel like this is a story with most of these professional teams against the Ezra, or just in general. People seem to forget about the Aegis of the Legion. Well, Watch is just building super selfishly this game. Giants built into Cowl. Mm -hmm. It's not going to help out the rest of his team. OQ actually going for the earlier Bloodthirst, or I mean Blade of the Ruin King, even though there is that Frozen Heart onto Ixu because he just needs to sustain in case he actually gets hit by any of Ezreal's abilities. Yeah, and Oku is just been split pushing this whole game as well. And pretty much uncontested. Well, there's nobody who can actually stop him from split pushing, especially once he gets that blade. He actually is in a very good situation mm -hmm. to just keep splitting. And it, because of the increase on the blade's range, he may actually be able to kill Mickey in a 1v1 too, because That's he'll true. get that slow. Now that that range buff, ha or the range on the blade has been buffed once again, for uh, range champions. Well, it'll mainly depend on whether OQ can spell shield that true shot barrage coming in from Mickey in a straight up duel, which I think he will be able to. OQ known for his strong mechanics. Yeah, oh, he's actually just stopping on Cutlass and now going to Last Whisper. So this is fine too. He still has the life steal. He still has the ability to get this to uh, duel here, especially with his ultimate. Mm -hmm. Well. Things have slowed down a little bit. However, Dragon will come up in 45 seconds, so it looks like it will be a possible setup for Anarchy. However, there's so many wards in their blue side jungle. Yeah, they have to be so cautious about this. The flank from Malkai. You can see he's watching. Duke is just sitting there right now. Oh, that's still a lot of damage, though. Duke wants this engage. Now he's just going to leave the base, so they don't see what they want to see as they're trying to set up, so no home guard flank, but he still has the glory. Rebels Anarchy currently 2k down in gold and down two dragons. However, that should equalize if they manage to take the top and bottom turret. Gonna be seen very easily with that tremor sense. Well, who will destroy the pink ward first? Oh, here we go. 
Yeah, try and come in here. There's a the Simmerold pop. They want to get on a Snowflyer. There's a play on a watch. And Pure nearly dead already on the top side. He hasn't fallen yet, though. He has his ultimate. And Duke finds Mickey and kills him. And that'll be a cleanup. That is the real danger here is getting on to that Ezreal, and now we have Watt trying to follow through. Nice Ooh. kick backwards to catch out Iksu, and he's gonna fall. There is another twisted advance, Sonyun gets caught, and a huge team fight, four for zero. Najit can just turn on to the Baron. Well played, and yeah, here we go. There's not much that Rebels Anarchy can do to stop this Baron from going down. However, Mickey will be up in 15 seconds, and should time with his true shot barrage. However, it's going down very quickly. All right, well, Najin, oh, sure. you're going to try and get away, does die to a Prey Seeker. There's the gravity field, though, to zone Lyra out. There's not really going to be a shot, so he takes out someone, but can't steal the Baron. Now, Najin in prime position. I mean, looking at this fight right here, that was a great combo by Pure. First off, he flash headbutt pulled. It's his second great one of the game, and then that gave Duke enough time to get the necessary damage down on to Mickey. Uh, Pure has been playing great this game. Yes. That's his second kill he set up with Flash uh, headbutt pull in a really beautiful fashion. And Pure's been playing well this whole series, even in their loss um, in set two. The, he, was, he was doing as much as he could to keep his team uh -oh. in the game. Oh, Goon gonna get grabbed by a, okay. Oh, okay. Victor does a lot of damage. Yep. Uh, another kick coming through go. right into Duke's waiting arms. Or branches, I guess. <laughs> the waiting branches of Duke. The, the, give, actually, the giving Duke. <laughs> the giving Duke. The waiting branches of Duke actually sounds like a uh, an old English novel. Oh man. <laughs> Not actually. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I, I, actually, I, I, I like the giving Duke better though. <laughs> I can see Jane Austen writing the waiting branches <laughs> of Duke. Okay, here we go. Baron buff. Up charge down the mid lane for Najin EM Fire. Well, not much to say about this. Yeah, the push is going to continue, especially with the True Shot Barrage down. Uh, or it won't. You know, I could be wrong. They may just want to go for tier twos right now, try and extend the gold lead. I After Najin's very safe game one. <laughs> Except I, in this game, there actually still is a danger of anarchy coming back because yeah, of the power of the Ezreal. Ezreal now with the necessary Void Staff. Hopefully he'll be building into that Rabadon's Death Cap, or maybe even the Zonia's Hourglass may not be so terrible this game. Uh, I don't know if the Zonia's going to batter. If he gets caught out, uh, basically Duke can just sit on him while the Zonia's is there. Mm -hmm. Spell Shield on the hook, so no grab for OQ. Duke uh, making sure Pure takes a little bit of damage right there, not bothering to actually sidestep that true shot barrage. He's like, I'm tanking up, why aren't you pure? <laughs> well, Dodge and EM fire in prime position to close out this game. AK goal lead up three dragons and had taken a Baron. So, looking good, Dodge and EM fire after the hiccup in game two. Yeah, it was quite the hiccup. Quite the hiccup. It was less of a hiccup and more of a uh, vomit, I guess. <laughs> You could put it like that. Yep. You really want to go for the graphic imagery. I'm all about the graphic imagery, Monte Cristo. I know. You, that's why. Uh, that's what you do on Twitter. Just the graphic imagery all the time. Yep. A picture says a thousand words. <laughs> well, a lot of a bit of a lull once again, and the Baron buff has worn out for Najin. And dang. Goon is strong. 404, yes. no hope found for Anarchy. <laughs> 404, no hope. Wow, that is that is very true. You're you're an internet poet, Barry. Oh man, using error messages er too. Error messages and dank memes. <laughs> the best. Oh jeez. Well, Dodgen may just wait out for more dragons. They actually have no reason to try and siege this base. Yep when they could just increase their ward count and try and play this <laughs> Just safely. pad their stats. Yeah, it's, it's been a, a day of stat padding for Najin. Well, whoever took them on their fantasy teams must be very, very happy yeah. if they manage to win this game. Caveat. Yes, if they do, but they, they uh, I think they have an opportunity here to do it. Duke, is, Duke and Pure have been doing a great job of 
fulfilling their role of killing Runeglaive Ezreal. Indeed. And Runeglaive Ezreal not really getting closer to having a QSS as he just needs the damage at the moment. Yeah, Runeglaive Ezreal has had not a great win rate in Korea so far, I, I feel. Uh, I don't have the exact stats. Mickey has lost once with it, may lose again here. Benu won once with it. Yes. There haven't that been that many games. It's either been banned or dissuaded. Right. It was dissuaded from Faker pay playing at Anarchy with the Yasuo pick. Mm -hmm. And here we go. They want to get on to Mickey. There is no home guard. There is a glory, but actually that barrel was popped early, so there was no slow. And now oh, Lyra gets caught out. Bye-bye. Here takes a chunk of damage, but that true shot barrage is now down. However, Lyra will be gone for 30 seconds, so surely this is a middle inhibitor turret plus the inhibitor for Naj and EM Fire. I mean, if they want to commit to this, which they absolutely should at this stage, they have to be careful that nobody gets blown back in with an exploding cast mm -hmm. uh, from Ixu, but so much oh, damage. Yeah. Oh, OQ yeah. actually tanked most of that. That was a bit dodgy, his front line not actually getting the turret hit, so he has to back off and heal off some jungle minions. Now, Dragon and Baron coming up absolutely simultaneously. But with the Blade of the Ruin King, OQ can just solo the dragon very easily. Yes, he can. And Mickey still trying to work up to his next item, which looks to be a Rabadon's Death Cap. So he's just going for that pure damage, trying to do as much with his Luden's Echo and his Q as possible. Has a lot of faith in his own positioning, mm -hmm. apparently, with how many tools Najin has built, two glories. Oh god. And the Maokai home guard to really deal with this pickup. Still no Aegis of the Legion for Najin EM Fire. Which they should build soon, I would feel. I'm just shocked they don't have it already, Barry. Well That's Najin for you, Monte Cristo. Yeah. The selfish builds. The selfish builds. The individual plays. It's true. It, it does kind of encompass Najin as a team, right? <laughs> I cannot lie. Well, Lyra split pushing in the bottom lane. Probably going to head back very soon. Yeah, it does get, set up a nice wave right there. Maybe it will be enough to actually take down a tier one if Najin doesn't start to hightail it all the way across the map. But with the Baron spawning in 13 seconds, there is a real risk to sending OQ down that far and letting it be seen on the map. Well, OQ might decide to just solo this dragon, like you said, but looks like to be a two-man. Oh, dear. Just check it with the True Shot Barrage. It is going to be a little late. They didn't have the precise dragon timer, looks like, but it did. They may actually pick up a turret. That tier one not going to be too beneficial for them right now compared to dragon number four oh, for Najin, but they finally get another outer turret, their second of the game. And that, we see Najin just, they just want to push up the lane, then threaten the Baron. Yep, and that's even more wave clear for Najin EM Fire because they can just take down these creep waves so quickly with that force dragon buff. And looks like they Watch has a flank here, possibly. Yeah, they're going to fight now, actually. There's the glory. Snowflower lands the hook, but they can't actually find their way onto the back line. Najin has to be careful. They don't get kited and poked right now. Pure uses his ultimate, but here's the re engage. True Shot Barrage. Going to chunk out some more people. Najin. Not with the best engage right there. They couldn't actually find a pick, and they can't just run at Anarchy straight on. That is not going to work. Yeah, and Watch has his Flash and Dragon Rage kick still up, so there is still a chance for a play to be made here. And I would still give... Oh, Watch ca caught a little bit, but I would still give the advantage in a 5v5 fight to Najin EM Fire. If they get the right engage, yes. If they all just run at them with Righteous <laughs> Glories and can't take out Corky. This massive minion wave still has not been dealt with by Notch, and it already took out one turret. It may grab another one on its slow, methodical, grinding way towards the inhibitor. Alistair thinking about going after that, but actually they're just going to let the turret go down. They want to keep pressure on the Baron, even though they don't have very good wards around it, and they haven't cleared much if anything, away from Anarchy. Well, Watch recalls on a ward, so Anarchy knows that Watch is back in base. So there's no chance of a Baron being taken right now. Yeah. 
Well, Anarchy doing a good job of buying time. They are only 6k gold down, and a 6-item Ezreal, that AP is a scary thing indeed. Looks like the Tier 2 tower not going to fall, hanging on by a thread. Well, Anarchy will absolutely have to fight this fifth dragon that will be threatened by Nodj and EM Fire in approximately four minutes, I, I believe. Three to four minutes, so... Najin's using the ward denial strategy of just waiting for all the three minute wards to expire. <laughs> Instead of actually clearing them with their two lenses or adequate pink wards, Ooh. now they're going to go on to the Baron. Lyra Lyra's knows. here, but Ezreal is not. Oh, messed up that ward. Okay, they knew it was coming in. Oki just going to spell shield it. Well, they still have two smites, does Anarchy, but very far away. Yeah, and actually they just get scared. They want to fight right here. There's oh, the flank, and he's going to get on to Sangyu immediately. And Duke is all alone, Twist though. Advance. Can Sangyu get out? Actually, has to flash. No lantern taken. Great disengage. But they did disengage well. Now Pure very, very low. Goog is so low on the outside, but Anarchy. Lyra going to get punished by the Chaos Storm as Goog escapes. Pure falls, trading that support for the jungler. But Goog not able to participate in this fight. Again, Anarchy able to kite out. They have a lot of disengage, so pulling it off in the end. Yeah, and Itsu saving the day there with his explosive cast, making sure that only Duke was in his team, and there was not enough damage to follow up on Duke's engage. OQ, they oh, want to make a pick yeah. right here. They're going to find Ixu. Ixu going to body slam out. It gets slowed by the Tempest Cripple. And Watch just not very tanky. You're going to have to flash forward from Sivir. Now Duke back onto Mickey. Mickey has no mana. Mickey is most likely dead here, trying to get some mana back with the smite. Nope. And dead. Double kill for OQ on the flash play as they punish Ixu's kind of cavalier recall. Yep. And with Anarchy's solo laners down for 35 seconds plus, this looks like to be a push into the middle inhibitor and possibly a win. Uh, Goon's coming back. He's walked all the way back from base right now. They will take the inhibitor out. And now oh. they're just going to go for it. Chaos Storm pops. Sangyu doesn't fall. Able to Valk out. But look at how many cannon minions have stacked up here on the bottom side. Will we see Nacha just turn onto the Baron immediately? And looks like Nacha and Empire will go for this Baron indeed. <laughs> There's a lot of wards in that pit. Quite a few, but they're going to try it again. And now Mickey is down. Lyra slowly making his way forward. They're going to try a TP for this. This is an absolute desperation TP. And oh. there's the explosive cast. Not going to beat out the smite. Nice try from Ixu, but Baron goes to Najin. And now they can just recall rapidly and start to push down. They do have some nice waves already built up in the side lanes. Yep, Ixu forgot that he wasn't a season three Gragas and wasn't going to do a huge amount of damage with that ultimate. Well, didn't have any AP, so that yeah. definitely doesn't help your situation. <laughs> I guess he was trying to anticipate the smite coming down and possibly go for that small window I mean, of you steal. Have, you have to try, right? Right. There's no, no harm in trying. And that ultimate is up fairly quickly at this late stage of the game. Almost up right now. Especially with all his CDR from Frozen Heart and his Spirit Visage. Yeah, so, uh, not going to have any problems using that explosive cask rather liberally. Well, this looks like fifth dragon in 15 seconds for Nodge and the Empire. Anarchy has to do something about this or they will lose the game. Yeah, Nodge just playing super cautiously, as is well warranted. They need this win to stay in the hunt for playoffs. Well, they, Lyra snuffs them out with his Tremor Sense. Oh, Watch making a big flank coming in. And there we go. Duke finds his way out of Mickey, uh, and there's a Chaos Storm. Goon coming in for the flank, and Mickey just gets destroyed. Sangyu, the next target. There's no more damage from Anarchy, and they will just be mopped up. Lyra has the GA, so they're going to have to kill him one more time. But there are no angels except those to guide Lyra to heaven. <laughs> well, looks like X is dead. Oh, surrender. Uh, surrender will close out the series. Anarchy takes Najin to game three, but Najin finds a way to defeat the Runeglaive Ezreal, making now 0-2 on that champion. And much better execution that time around, much better draft for Najin than we saw in game two. 
Yep, after that embarrassing loss in game two, the Najini Empire knew exactly what they needed to do to shut down this Runeglaive Ezreal and play, that, play those fights out as well as they could, I feel like. Yeah, Duke and Oku really showed up big that game, mm -hmm. too. Oku had some great cleanup plays, calculated aggression, which earned him that 8-0-7 score. And Duke, he did his job. Duke and Pure did yep. their job 